Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and we are going to talk in this video about batch mode opportunities. It's kind of like the Clash song, except way less catchy and cool, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, my life, what am I going to start it out so promising. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, you can do that. You can sign up for a membership. If you would like to ask me questions for office hours, you can do that with, at that link. The, both of these links are down in the video description. Uh, if you would like help with your SQL Server, perhaps you need help with your batch mode opportunities, uh, I am available uh, for consulting. Uh, you can hire me, I will show up, I'll, I will wear this Adidas shirt, and uh, I will be just as clean and kempt as I am in these videos. Uh, not, not drunk, and it'll be fun. Uh, and as always, my rates are reasonable. If you would like to buy my performance tuning training, there's 24 hours of it, just for you. Aren't you special? Look at you, special little thing you are. Uh, you can get all of it for about 150 bucks for life if you go to that URL and plug in that discount code. And uh, this is also helpfully assembled for you down in the video description. Uh, my T-SQL course, Learn T-SQL with Eric, that's me, uh, is also available. All 23 hours, uh, just, just about 23 hours of the beginner content is fully published. Uh, if you are coming to Pass Data Community Summit and attending Kendra Little and I's pre-cons there, uh, you will of course get access to this material as I consider it companion content to what will be going on there. The advanced stuff is being worked on currently. That'll all start going up after the summer. Uh, and, and the other thing going up after the summer is the price. It'll, it'll go up from 250 bucks to 500 bucks. So you should buy that now while it is still 250 bucks. Speaking of the summer, gosh, how am I going to get all this done? Uh, Redgate is taking me uh, on a partial world tour, you know, mostly small clubs and venues. Uh, uh, New York City, August 18th to 19th, Dallas, Texas, September 15th to 16th, and the Hamlet of Utrecht in the Netherlands, October 1st and 2nd. Uh, and that all leads up to Past Data Community Summit, where the aforementioned T-SQL pre-cons, plural, will be taking place. But with that out of the way, let's talk about spotting opportunities for batch mode. Now, uh, this was the query that I ran in the last video where I said, no, that default cardinality estimator sure didn't do so good. And if we look at the execution plan for it, uh, we'll come back to that. I've already run it because golly and gosh, why, why sit through that eight, eight and a half, eight, well, it was eight point eight and a half seconds last time. I guess, I don't know, maybe... Maybe Windows Update wasn't doing something in the background when I ran this one. We, 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 this was 300 milliseconds or so faster, so I don't know. Got, we got a speed boost from something. Sure wasn't Microsoft. Uh, but looking at this execution plan, there are things that I do not love about it. For example, all of this stuff happens in row mode, like SQL Server. It is the year 2025. We are in database compatibility level 160. You have, I am, I'm using developer edition, which is an enterprise edition equivalent skew of SQL Server. The batch mode on row store feature is there. It should, it, why, why wouldn't you use it here? We are, we are scanning 53 million rows just about. Why on earth would you leave this to row mode? What, what, are, what is on your mind? SQL Server, gosh. And it does it all throughout the plan. Another way that you can tell you're not get really getting batch mode on row stores because we still have these repartition streams operators. Now, sometimes these can still show up in show up in mix batched and batch, batch in row mode plans. Uh, but since none of the parallel exchanges support batch mode, uh, we know that these operators are not happening in batch mode. Neither are these compute scalars. If you if you squint really hard or I zoom in like a like a reasonable presenter should do, uh, we will see that these occur in row mode, as does this big old whopping hash join here. Gigantic hash join, huge hash join, right? 52 million rows come in from each side. And what do we do? Row mode, SQL server, smack it, smack it, smack. What is on your mind, buddy? Let's let's try this again. Let's give SQL Server some ideas about itself. Let's say, hey, SQL Server, what might be a good idea here? Now, this, this table column store helper uh, is a completely empty table. Uh, I'm just going to type in a demo real quick. 
uh, DBO dot column store helper just because I want you to see the execution plan here. We return no rows from this. The execution plan shows that we, are, we have a zero row clustered column store object in our database. You can do this with a temp table or whatever other kind of thing you want to slap a clustered column store index on. But all we're going to do here is say left join to our column store helper uh, on one equals zero. One can never equal zero, but there is now an object with a column store index on it somewhere in near or around our query. And so the optimizer is going to think somewhat differently about things. So if we run this, remember that was about eight and a half seconds, right? We're going to just go with it there. Now, what are we down to? 2.4 seconds. Jeez, SQL Server, I think, I think batch mode might have been a good call here. What do you think? What, what, what do you think? How do you feel about that one, SQL Server? Should we have used batch mode? Was that, was that a good idea? Well, probably. So uh, now we have, I mean, we still have a scan of the, of the votes table on both sides because we don't have a, like a where clause on the votes table that we could like, you know, like filter rows and whatnot out. But you, you, you might notice that, that like, you know, th this takes uh, about 800 milliseconds before this is like 1.7 seconds. This takes just about the same time, right? It's off by 20 milliseconds here. Not that big of a deal, uh, but, you know, especially considering what these times were before. And all of these things are happening now in batch mode, right? We have a batch here. We have a batch here. Yeehaw, look at us. Good job. Even our compute scalars are happening in batch mode. And now our, that big giant hash join that we were doing before in row mode with 52, almost 53 million rows coming on in from each side uh, are happening in batch mode. Even this top end sort is happening in batch mode. Now, like I said before, the, the parallel exchanges do not support batch mode. Boo. Neither does the top operator. The top operator also does not support batch mode. So the, the plan timing in this one looks a little funny because, you know, for, for batch mode operators, which is like, you know, all this stuff, the times that you see in there are just the, the is the wall clock time spent in that specific operator. So it's like 800, like in a row, in a row store query, it, it's cum cumulative going from right to left, like the child ones build it up. I'm going to show you a way to change that in a second. So these numbers, like, th like these numbers are all just for the individual operators. But by the time we get over here and we get to these row mode operators, these ones add up all the times for the stuff that happened before them. So the 2.4 seconds you see here and here is not 2.4 seconds a piece. You remember this whole query finished in about 2.4 seconds. We can validate that by going to the properties and looking at query time stats and seeing that uh, there was about 18 seconds of CPU time and 2.4 seconds of elapsed time. So that's one, one good sign that your, your queries could possibly do with some batch mode is when you have gigantic scans of tables, especially in parallel, uh, and big old hash joins, but they're happening in row mode. It's usually not what you want. Right, especially if you you have any say over it, batch mode uh, really helps because like the more rows get involved, you know, row mode just does exactly what it sounds like. It processes a row, even even though we're not like using a cursor or a loop or something like that. Iteratively, like inside, like this is why op query plan operators are often called iterators because they are iterating over rows. And SQL Server in row mode pipelines all this stuff, so it's like one row and one row and one row. Granted, that happens pretty quickly because you know. The people who made SQL Server were pretty good programmers or something like that. But uh, batch mode is much faster here because batch mode processes up to 900 rows at a time, depending on the size of those rows, sticks all those rows on a CPU register and uses something called SIMD, which is single instruction, multiple data to run CPU instructions over batches of rows at a time. Which, it, which when you have many millions of rows is typically a good idea because it removes all the CPU boundness from your queries. So let's look at another example that's, that builds on this example. So uh, I'm using a trace flag here, uh, 7418. This one uh, came out in SQL Server 2022. And what this, what this trace flag does, which is, you know, technically undocumented and unsupported. So, you know, don't go messing around in production with this one because who knows, right? I, I can't tell you everything that it does in effects or even if like that might cause stack dumps or assertion errors and, you know, whatever else product failures. I can't tell you. So 
uh, for, for demonstration and testing purposes only, uh, we are going to run this query, which builds on the query that we were just running. So what this is trying to do is uh, add in some more information about missing IDs in the votes table. Let's say that we wanted to summarize all of the data that we, all, all of the missing ranges in here. So we want to find the, the range, like the start range of when things go missing and the end range of when things go missing. This is a query that will do that. Uh, we have our ID plus one, we have our min ID minus one, and we have our not exist query here in order to find uh, the non-matching rows with our terribly non-sargable predicate here. And then we have this final, uh, this final predicate on our query here in order to figure out like like because we don't want to get like the last value in the table because that like that that's not actually a missing one that just we, we just don't need that last bit so i'm going to run this whole thing at once and uh the two things that i want to show you are one uh, I mean, the, the, the query plan is the most important part. We're dumping this into a temp table, so it doesn't matter much what else we're doing with it, right? We're not, we're not doing anything else terribly interesting, right? We, we put 5.4 million rows into a temp table. But this execution plan also happens entirely in row mode. Uh, I know it's a little hard to see here, but um, you know when, like, like if you if you just kind of understand the pattern of the like the like what what you're going to see in these tooltips, everything is happening in row mode. Even once again, this gigantic hash join between two tables and all the all the work that gets done in here. So this is this is like very similar. Like you might so. The important thing here is like, like most of the operators in this query plan are not eligible for batch mode but a small segment of them in this query plan are in, in this section of the query plan are like like granted like any of the like data acquisition operators like clustered index scans are absolutely eligible but you know things like top and stream aggregate and the uh, the parallel parallel exchanges like repartition streams and distribute streams and gather streams over here aren't nested loops join sure isn't but i wish it was it'd be so cool if it was boy i wish we had batch mode nested loops i don't know maybe that's just really hard to do but this whole thing once again takes uh well this one takes a little bit longer right this one actually if we go over to the very end here let's go look at the uh, properties and let's go look at the query time stats We've actually been lied to a little bit. The elapsed time on this was actually almost four, 14 seconds, 13.7. Why that doesn't show up here uh, appropriately? Well, uh, you know, like I said, the, 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 the um, wall clock time on parallel exchanges is bonkers. Bonkers. Not in a good way. Not in like, this is going to be a fun night bonkers. Like, this is like, oh, I'm getting arrested. <laughs> This isn't cool. So like you might have a query plan where the like a lot of the operators are not eligible for batch mode, but you might still spot like this is this is like like the, the last one I showed you was very simplified. This is like that same section of the query plan, but with a bunch of stuff around it, because I want to teach you what to focus in on, which is like this pattern in here. Thank you, Tooltip, for showing up un, 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 uninvited. So it's like this pattern in here, like we spend like if we think about like the amount of wall clock time that we spend in this plan, a lot of it is right in here, right? Like, like there's a lot going on in here. So let's do what we did lap before, right? Uh, so I have trace flag 7418 on. So this, this query plan is showing all of the operators uh, is only having the wall clock time of themselves, right? Like even the row, even the row mode ones are only showing like the wall clock time that they consumed. So that's like, like did I say that? I think I forgot to say that about the trace flag. That's what this trace flag does. It, it makes it so when you have a query plan, all of the operators in the query plan uh, will sh only show the wall clock time that they are responsible for. So it makes row mode plans act like batch mode plans uh, in, the, in that timing regard. So like all the stuff that you see in here, you know, even though it's not happening in batch mode, just uses that timing. So let's let's put this in now, right? So we have a, like just a hair under 14 seconds for this, right? Remember this lied to us when we looked at the query time stats, wall clock time was th almost 14 seconds. So let's put this in, right? We're gonna tag in our column store helper friend here, and we're gonna run this, and we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. I spent all that time warning you about the trace flag without ever actually explaining what the trace flag does. So this no longer takes. 
uh, this no longer takes almost 14 seconds. If you look at the query time stats for this now, we, we are down to six and a half seconds. And the, you know, like the, the sort of annoying thing is that like, like a lot of the, like the plan that we get, it reuses a lot of the operators from the last plan, right? Like we still have, like this whole section is still identical and this whole section is still identical, but this section in here now is all batch mode. And we can tell it's all batch mode because the repartition streams that used to be in here are gone. So it's a little annoying that we were like, hey, SQL Server, batch mode would be really cool to, to do here, wouldn't it? And SQL Server was like, I gotcha. But then like we get a, we, like stream aggregate does not support batch mode, right? Like this thing, like no batch mode. This thing, I don't know. It, like it could get batch mode, right? Like it, it's, it's possible, but it, this, this thing, no, it just uses row mode. But up here, this scan of the votes table uses batch mode, right? This scan of the, the votes table uses batch mode, even though the storage is row store. Don't get too, don't get confused there. The compute scalars are both in batch mode and this uh, hash join happens in batch mode. So we were able to at least affect part of the plan uh, with that column store index being in there. We didn't get a fully batch, full batch mode on row store plan because uh, batch mode on row store, of course, goes much deeper into query, like the, into like the query optimizer than just sort of tricking SQL server into like, oh, you tripped and fell and landed on some batch mode. Uh, so like, like we got at least partial batch mode in here, which improved things, but we don't get like the full batch mode experience. There are, of course, you know, further, re there are, of course, ways that we could change this query to uh, probably make it a bit more batch mode friendly. But that sounds like the subject for another video. That sounds like a great video, Eric. So we're going to call this one here. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you over in the next video where I, I'm, I have not decided what, where I'm, what I'm going to do next. So it'll surprise you as much as it surprises me. All right. Thank you for watching.